there's an explosion. You can feel it like a bomb. Hey, pile drivers. This is John White, CEO of Antius and uh, corporate director of pile driving at Paco. Hey, we're not going to talk about pile drivers today. We're going to talk about UFOs. A lot of you know me as the co founder of Ape and the inventor of a lot of different pile driving machines and wick drain machines. What did I do after I sold my shares of Ape in 2012 and signed a very strict four year non compete agreement? So strict, I couldn't even say the word pile hammer. One of the first things I did was I moved from Normandy Park, Washington to Burien, Washington. I bought an old mansion on the water from Sean Kenny, the drummer for Alice in Chains, who owned it and played his music here. So I bought Forest Ledge. It was a fixer-upper beyond measure. And as I was remodeling it, I got visited by a couple of movie makers. And they were telling me about a true UFO story that happened out in front of the property 10 days before Roswell in June of 1947. And I'll let the local news channel explain it further. Before there was Roswell, before there were flying saucers spotted over Mount Rainier, there was the Maury Island incident. It's gone virtually unnoticed, though, for 65 years, but now it is getting new life in the form of a movie and even a celebration in Burien. Tomo Force Matt Markovich takes us back to that UFO mystery that started a flood of sightings. Well, what happened in Puget Sound in June of 1947 is getting new life. That's when Harold Dahl, salvaging logs, said he saw flying saucers. One was in trouble, dropping molten hot debris, killing his dog, burning his son. He told no one. He was then visited by a man in black, followed by a mysterious plane crash, killing the two pilots, allegedly transporting debris dropped from the troubled UFO. It's all known as the Maury Island Incident. It is based on secret FBI documents that were covered up for more than 50 years. Now, Maury Island is right across the water from where I live. I knew nothing about the story, but my pile driving friend, Jim Sherman, whose family homesteaded the Maury Island or Vashon Island, as it's better known, he was very well aware of it. And surprisingly, when he was remodeling his grandfather's house, he had pulled off some old covering on a door and there were notes about the UFO situation going on at Maury Island. The Maury Island incident has some incredible facts. Number one, it's the first encounter with the men in black. Number two, it's the first crash of the newly formed U.S. Air Force. Number three, Captain William Davidson and Lieutenant Frank Brown both died in that crash on August 1st, 1947. I agreed to finance the movie and become its executive producer, but I had no idea how popular it was going to be until it ended up in the Burbank Film Festival. This UFO video is really popular now among the UFO tinfoil hat people. Okay, how this story goes is Harold Dahl is he has a boat and he's got his son and some crew members and he's out on the water recovering logs that have escaped from the logging crews that are harvesting logs and he sees these flying saucers that drop down on him and then the next day he gets visited. Okay, before I show you this clip, keep in mind this is a rendition of the first encounter with the men in black in recorded history.
help you? I'm sorry about your dog, Mr. Dahl. We need to talk about yesterday. I'm sorry, you know, I... Do we know each other? I know you, Mr. Dahl. You're married to Helen, you have a boy, Charles, 15, a girl, Louise. You scavenged logs out of Tacoma. Moved your family into this house two years ago. You owe the bank $7,136 following last month's payment, which was two days late. It's uh, six in the morning. Mr. Dahl, it's 6.31. You were up at six, you always are. You made a pot of coffee, from which you'll drink one cup, leave the rest for Helen. Then you'll head over to the tin room, order your second cup of coffee of the day. Black, two sugars. The tin room opens at seven, although the owner usually opens a few minutes earlier. I arrived here at your doorstep at precisely 6.30, so I'm exactly on time. I'll follow you there. You from the bank? No, Mr. Dahl. This is about what happened on the water yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, I don't know. I understand from the hospital that your son's burns are not that serious. We can talk about it here if you like. Okay, so in the second scene, the, the man in black takes Dahl to a diner in Tacoma. Of course, it's not in Tacoma in our film. It's actually in Burien, Washington at the tin room and the opening of the second scene is the only part i got which was about two seconds walking down the sidewalk and this is where harold Dahl learns that the man in black knows every detail of what happened to him the day before this is some kind of joke joke? Somebody put you up to this? Listen, mister, yesterday was a lousy day. I'll tell you that. Now you're making this a lousy day. Maybe so. Now, are you going to tell me what you saw? So, after the man in black warns him to keep his mouth shut, he doesn't do so, and then he gets a delivery at his back door. Hello? Hey, I got us the meeting. It's perfect. Forced led. Christ, Fred, I just had some FBI, not that, I, I don't know what he was, but he came to my house and threatened my family. What are you talking about? He came to my house, threatened my family, said we can't tell anybody. We already did. Well, we have to fix it. We have to fix it, Fred. We have to keep your family from getting hurt. How? Get in the papers. Make it clear to the world, the FBI. He was an FBI. I don't care if it was J. Edgar Hoover. We have to make it clear that you're standing by what you saw. How will that help? You become untouchable. A celebrity. The world knows who you are. They don't want to get caught. They have to leave you alone. I have a family, Fred. Those are my stakes. Now you want me to raise the stakes? Calm down, Hal. This is bigger than us. We have to go to force. I'll call you back. Sorry about your dog, Mr. Dahl. So after we made the film, there was a lot of tourism in Burien that erupted from this movie. And to my surprise, Senator Karen Kaiser introduced a resolution in the state of Washington Capitol. Resolutions, Senate Floor Resolution 8648, the Secretary will read. Whereas on June 21st, 1947, Tacoma resident Harold Dahl and his son allegedly sighted six flying discs over Puget Sound near Vashon Murray Island 
an event now commonly known as the Murray Island Incident, and whereas on June 22, 1947, Mr. Dahl alleges he was warned not to talk about what he saw by a man dressed in a black suit. The President can only hope that the uh, House of Representatives is keeping the media's attention uh, fully trained elsewhere. If there are no further remarks. Question before the Senate is adoption of this resolution. As many as in favor, please say aye. aye. Many as opposed, please say no. Resolution is adopted. The President would like to recognize a few uh, guests that we have, some distinguished visitors with us here uh, from the uh, the team that put the film together, that produced this film. We have uh, Stephen Edmiston, who's the screenwriter and producer. We have Scott Schaefer, who's director and producer. John White, executive producer with the Senate. Please join me in welcoming them to the state legislature. You guys know that my goal is to get the U.S. Air Force to put a memorial in uh, memory of these two pilots that died in Kelso, Washington on uh, August 1, 1947, the birthday of the U.S. Air Force. After this last clip, you're going to hear David Templeton's song that he wrote for this movie, which has lasted the test of time and goes down as one of the most beautiful music performances that I've ever seen. And every time I hear it, I get tears to my eyes. This movie has inspired the Burien Film Festival and has brought happiness and joy to so many people in the city of Burien. Thank you for watching. These sightings, I really do believe that most of it is hysteria. Most of it. We need to keep the country, the people, safe. And sometimes we need to keep them safe from themselves, which means we need to keep them under control. You were Navy in the war? Yes, sir. Good thing you got out. After the war, every branch needs to prove that it's still relevant. So goddamn Admiral Byrd takes 13 warships, 4,700 men, and hundreds of warplanes to Antarctica. What? We can mark some territory. Except that Byrd finds something he doesn't expect and gets his ass kicked back to Annapolis. The Army's no better. They decided to deceive the country, focus the world's attention on a fairy tale in Roswell, New Mexico. Make the people forget all about what had already happened first, Maury Island. Disinformation is the current popular term. Miss Gandy, do you have the directive? Mr. Mitchell, I love my country. I've kept it safe from communists, Nazis, and gangsters. This UFO business. We don't know if it's Russians, spacemen, or just plain old mass hysteria. What we do know, Mr. Mitchell, is that the Army has seized jurisdiction over the flying disks, despite my strenuous objections. I have therefore given instructions that the services of the FBI are no longer being offered. Yes, sir. Despite what it says in that directive, Mr. Mitchell, please understand me. I do not give a good goddamn what the Army wants me to do. And that brings us to the second reason why you're here, Mr. Mitchell. I need some very loyal men. Men who are willing to join me to keep this country safe from this menace. These men must abide by the highest standards, but they must never identify themselves as being associated with the FBI. Do you understand? I do, sir. Mr. Dahl identified the man who threatened him as a man in black. Yes, he did. Mr. Mitchell. 
Would you be willing to be one of these men for me? 